Stars almost never form alone. This much is seen in hundreds of places across the Milky Way, from the Pleiades to the Hyades to the Orion Nebula and Beta Pictoris moving group. Stars form in clusters of dozens or hundreds or even thousands of neighbors, and even more interestingly, they tend to stick together for a pretty long time. When stars form, they usually move in the same direction as their birth cluster for hundreds of millions of years, before slowly dispersing throughout the galaxy and losing their siblings forever. As I talked about in my video about the Hyades star cluster, this means that there are planets throughout the galaxy orbiting different stars that are related to one another. They formed out of the same material at the same time, and even though they may have drastically different environments around their respective stars, they are still related. So that raises the question, where are the siblings of the Sun? There are hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way, so you may think that searching for solar siblings is an impossible task. And it is difficult. Not only do you have to make sure the stars are the same age, but you also have to find out their chemical composition to see how similar it is to the Sun. Then you need to track its motion throughout the galaxy until you have enough data to say where it came from, and see if billions of years ago it might have been in the same spot as the Sun. To accurately determine that, you also need to take into account the gravitational influence of other stars, which will slightly change the trajectory of other stars around them. You can see how this quickly spirals out of control. At some point, we would need to find the motions of billions of separate stars just to find solar sibling candidates. Luckily, the Gaia Space Telescope did exactly that. It was designed for only one purpose, astrometry, tracking the positions of motions of stars. It was launched in 2013 and ceased operations in early 2025, but in that time it gathered accurate position and motion data of well over 1 billion stars. It also discovered exoplanets, some of the closest black holes to Earth, and a lot more. It took so much data that even months after the mission was over, most of it still hasn't been released. Even before Gaia, we surveyed hundreds of thousands of stars with different telescopes. You can also find out the chemical composition of a star based on its spectrum, which is something Gaia and a whole bunch of other telescopes have done. Specifically, metallicity is important. That essentially means the amount of material a star has that isn't hydrogen or helium. Stars that formed in different parts of the galaxy will have slightly different metallicities, and stars that formed in similar areas will have similar metallicities. So while in total, Gaia and other telescopes have only observed around 1% of the total stars in the Milky Way, that's still billions of stars. And if the Sun formed in a typical cluster with hundreds or thousands of stars, then statistically at least one of its siblings should be in this dataset. Due to the composition of the Sun, we expect it to have formed in an open cluster. Essentially, if the stars formed too close together, it would have disturbed planet formation and the solar system wouldn't exist. However, based on the types and amounts of radioactive elements on Earth, the stars have to have been close enough together for supernovae from the largest stars to release radioactive material to the surrounding stars. The largest stars only exist for a few million years and go supernova before they even leave the cluster they were born in, so it's likely the very early solar system was hit by some of them. Which also means that the largest of the Sun's siblings are already dead, so there are likely some black holes and neutron stars, and probably some white dwarfs too, that are related to the Sun scattered throughout the Milky Way. Though the largest stars are also the rarest stars, so there may be only a handful of black holes related to the Sun, if there are any at all. But anyways, onto the actual candidates. Surprisingly, there are actually a pretty good amount of solar sibling candidates we may have found. Though before we get into it, there's one important thing about the list I'm using. This list is just a list of all stars that have, at one point or another, been considered a candidate solar sibling. With how little data we have on these stars, that could easily be refuted, so I'm very hesitant to consider any of the stars I'll mention in this video as likely candidates. There may have been a paper refuting a star as a candidate that I missed in my research for this video, for example. This list also includes stars like Lisa 710, a star you may know as one that's approaching the solar system and will enter the Oort cloud in about a million years or so. A star that has been estimated to be about 300 million years old, making it impossible to be a solar sibling. So take a lot of these stars with a grain of salt. A lot of these don't seem like strong candidates, or even candidates at all. For this video, I'll be trying to mention the ones that seem to be the most likely, but again, with how little easily accessible data there is, there may be things I miss. But we'll start with the most famous one. HD 162826. HD 162826 is the closest candidate sibling to the Sun at just 110 light years away. This is a pretty large distance, but considering that these stars have had 4.5 billion years to disperse throughout the galaxy, which itself is 100,000 light years wide, it's pretty interesting that there's a candidate this close. This star is in F type 17% more massive than the Sun and 32% larger in radius. This makes it about 2.3 times brighter than the Sun, though it's still too dim to be seen without a telescope. 
HD162826 was determined as a candidate sibling based on its chemical composition, with both the Sun and this star having similar ratios of rare elements like barium and yttrium. Because we know its motion, it was also possible to estimate where it was in the past, and it seems that both the Sun and this star may have been in similar areas 4.5 billion years ago. However, there are some disagreements as to whether or not this star is a true sibling of the Sun. The paper that originally said it says it's almost certain, but another paper that came out later said that it had a low probability. A lot of this is because of measurement uncertainties. The star was considered a candidate before Gaia observed it, and there were also uncertainties about both the initial conditions of the cluster the Sun formed in, and how the Milky Way looked at the time, both of which could alter the trajectories of all the stars in the cluster. It's also important to note that HD162826 has an identical composition to the Sun within error bars, and there's still a range of uncertainties about its exact composition. To avoid repeating myself throughout this video, I will just mention that this will be true of all potential solar siblings covered here. Just be aware that for every candidate I mention, there's a large amount of uncertainty as to whether or not it's actually related to the Sun. Though so far, it does seem like HD162826 is our most likely candidate. Everything else in this video will have significantly more uncertainty than even this star. Before we get on to the next candidates, what kind of planets does this star have? Finding a sibling star would be cool, but I think finding planets around them would be even more interesting. Keeping with the analogy of the stars born with the Sun to be siblings, that would make all of their planets cousins with the solar system planets. So far, no planets have been found around HD162826, but we have established some limits around it. Other studies have ruled out the presence of a hot Jupiter, and also consider a planet similar to Jupiter in general as unlikely. But based on the star's metallicity, similar to the Sun's, rocky planets seem to be likely, though we haven't found any direct evidence of them yet. We'll get to the candidates with confirmed planets a bit later in the video. HD 35317 is the next solar sibling candidate I want to talk about, as it's a system made up of three stars. There's extremely little information about this system online, but what I can tell, the main star is an F-type about 50% more massive than the Sun, about 190 light years away from Earth, with two smaller stars orbiting it, which themselves are a binary pair. They're on a highly eccentric orbit around the main star that takes about 923 years to complete. Though just be aware when you search the star online, one of the first results is the Italian Wikipedia page for it, which itself has almost no information. Also, I'm not Italian. This unfortunately will be the case for most stars covered in this video. For every interesting star with planets and things we actually know about it, or at least stars with proper Wikipedia articles, there are a hundred more with nothing but very general characteristics that are very hard to find real information about. Though things get better with HD 175740. This star is an example of larger stars dying early I mentioned earlier. Despite being about the same age as the Sun, it has expanded into an orange giant over 10 times wider than the Sun and 50 times as bright. Two different studies give it two different potential masses, so it's either about 39% more massive than the Sun or 2.8 times more massive. Assuming it's the same age as the Sun, the larger mass is more likely. Next up is HD 101197, which I'm only including because when you searched on Google, the first four results are all linked to various hardware components, which I thought was funny. This one is on sale for $100 on eBay. But enough fooling around, now it's time for the solar sibling candidates with planets. HD 219828 is a candidate solar sibling, though I can't tell how strong of a candidate it is. From what I've seen, not very, and I'm only including it because it was on a list of a paper I'll link in the description. However, I wanted to talk about it anyway because it has two confirmed planets around it, and even if it turns out to not be a solar sibling, it's still a pretty interesting system. HD219828 is a subgiant star about 23% the mass of the Sun and 70% its radius. It's somewhere around 4.6 billion years old like the Sun, though with an uncertainty of 700 million years both ways. Its first planet is a hot ice giant with a minimum mass very similar to Neptune at about 21 Earths, but that's only a minimum mass, and the true mass may be much higher. It's just 0.04 AU away from the star, much closer than Mercury orbits the Sun, making this planet extremely hot. It has a pretty circular orbit, which is interesting compared to the highly eccentric brown dwarf in the outer system. That's the second planet, HD 219828c. It's about 16 times the mass of Jupiter, which is massive enough to be a brown dwarf, though it's considered a planet. It has an extremely high eccentricity of 0.811, on an orbit that takes about 13 years to complete. It has a semi-major axis of about 5.6 AU, though the distance varies wildly based on where it is in its orbit. It gets as close to the star as 1 AU, and as far as I can tell, as far away as 10 AU. That means throughout this planet's orbit, it gets as close to its star as Earth is from the Sun, and as far away as Saturn. 
That is an extremely interesting environment, and due to this planet's high mass of 16 Jupiters, it could have some even more interesting moons. Could these planets be cousins of Earth? Does the solar system's extended family include a hot ice giant and an eccentric brown dwarf with a crazy orbit? It's not confirmed yet, but it seems like it could be a possibility. The star HD 168769 was also on the list, and one of the exoplanet databases I used listed it as having a confirmed planet. Of course, on closer inspection, that planet has a mass of 63 Jupiters, which is so far into brown dwarf territory, it's bordering on becoming a red dwarf star, so I'm not going to consider that a planet. The star Kepler-1974 was also considered to be a potential solar sibling, and it has a planet roughly 20% the radius of Jupiter with an unknown mass on a six-day orbit around it. However, data from Gaia later suggested that this star is actually part of a cluster just 40 million years old, which would make it completely unrelated to the Sun. I came into this video hoping to have a bit more concrete data to talk about, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case. The only really strong candidate I could find was HD 162826, the star I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and the rest seemed to be far less certain or even refuted. Though there are still two more stars I want to talk about. The comet C2018V1, also called Makholtz Fujikawa Yamamoto, is a comet that's currently on a hyperbolic trajectory, meaning it has an eccentricity greater than 1 and is leaving the solar system. Interestingly, it seems to have approached the solar system at a very low relative speed, meaning its motion throughout the galaxy was a similar speed and direction to the Sun. This means there are two possibilities. One is that this comet was just a member of the Sun's Oort cloud. It formed with the solar system has never been a part of another star system. This is a pretty likely explanation. However, an interstellar origin has not been ruled out. That doesn't mean it's likely, but it does mean that it's a possibility. And if it did come from interstellar space, then that must mean that the star it came from has a very similar speed and direction to the Sun, which could make it a solar sibling candidate. So the question now is, if this comet came from interstellar space at all, which star it came from? And so far, two stars have been identified as potential origin points for this comet, based on their similar motions. They're named Embrace Yourself for this one, Gaia 19271435149556588880 and Gaia 19663834657464135568. This makes both of these stars potential solar sibling candidates, though more data is needed to confirm this. Though interestingly, if the comet did come from interstellar space, then it entered the solar system less than a million years ago. So, if that scenario is true, then this comet formed in the birth cluster of the Sun as part of another star system, then billions of years later got ejected from its system, and then somehow found its way to the Sun, which is coincidentally a sibling to the original star it came from. That's a pretty cool coincidence, if true. Though it could also just be a normal Oort Cloud comet, and many scenarios that's the more likely explanation. Before I end this video, there's one more thing I want to talk about, panspermia. We know that life on Earth began less than a billion years after it formed. This was also potentially a time of increased asteroid impacts. If life on Earth began early, and the Sun's birth cluster remained gravitationally bound for a billion years or so, which is possible in some scenarios, and some life-containing meteors were blasted off Earth and into interstellar space, and those meteors were captured by other stars in the birth cluster, then it might be a possibility that Earth seeded some of these stars with life. However, that's an incredibly unlikely scenario. Even even if everything goes right, and we get a very lucky impact that blasts some Earth material out of the solar system, it still has to be captured by another star, and then that material has to impact another planet. And maybe after all that, it ends up on HD 219828b, and the microbes are out of luck because now they're stuck on a scorching hot ice giant. But maybe there might be an incredibly small but non-zero possibility that if a solar system sibling has an Earth-like planet, that planet may have been given life through panspermia by Earth. I don't consider this likely at all, and that also raises the question of why it doesn't seem to have happened with the solar system planets. If microbes can cross interstellar space, then surely they can cross the relatively much smaller distance to Mars, for example. But maybe there is a chance that if we ever find life around a solar sibling, it's an extremely distant relative of ancient Earth life, which would be super interesting. But with that, that's where I'll end this video. Clearly the topic of what stars are related to the Sun is a very open question, and there's a ton we don't know. Hopefully we can confirm that some of these stars are related to us soon, and start studying both the siblings of the Sun and the cousins of the solar system planets. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space exploration.